Welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. Joining me is Gaudi Molina. Hello, Gaudi. Hello, and today is not a good morning. Today is <laughs> Did I say good morning? No, no, no. Oh, but I, always I was like, say did good I just naturally do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I always do. And today's not a good morning. Today's a good evening. <laughs> and how, Gaudi, be honest. How are you feeling right now? Honestly, it's quite warm in here. <laughs> it's crazy. So what happens is we usually film in the morning. Yep. But we've got a part two coming from Finland, Ari oh. Sart, uh, Sartanonia. I'm sorry, Ari, um, for butchering your name. I tried to get it close. <laughs> He's the CEO and founder of Radai. Um, It's early morning in Finland right now. So it was best to coordinate it now. But yeah. we're in the middle of a heat wave here in beautiful so, British Columbia. Um, it's pretty hot in here. <laughs> and so it is toasty. So this is not for show. This is not a new sponsor. This is for survival right now. Yes. Very glad. Very glad to have Ari on. Um, their, their company has continued to develop. Um, we got we were talking to them at some of the early stages. Um, and now they're in, you know, bigger in the market, uh, you know, uh, develop their products more. It's going to be very exciting to have them on. Before we do that, Gowdy, we've got some sponsors today and they want their name spoken. <laughs> All righty. So let's start with Tyson Krupp. Today's question of the week is brought to you by Tyson Krupp. Tyson Krupp Industrial Solutions Mining Technologies Division is the market leader in heavy mining equipment for continuous operations from pit to port. This includes crushing and grinding, conveying as well as materials handling for stockyards and ports. Today, we have Stefan Ebert, head of the product line revamps of Tyson Krupp's mining business. And today's question is, what does sustainable mining mean for Tyson Krupp as an OEM for the mining industry? Sustainable mining, in our understanding, means the transformation of mining operations by a maximum reduction of fuel-powered fleet, plus an optimal energy and water consumption. Our product offering at Tyson Krupp has ever been electrically powered, focusing almost completely on a sustainable operation for decades already. Thus, preconditions are met to allow green mining from our portfolio perspective. Our focus is very much on driving efficiency of operations by looking systematically into correlations of all machines across the flow sheet. To raise maximum potentials, our measures cover both hardware modifications as well as smart automation and digitalization solutions. Next up, we have General Kinematics. Revolutionize the way you think about screening with General Kinematics STM screen, two-mass vib vibratory screen. Using General Kinematics proven two-mass technology, this innovative screen is capable of handling increased ca uh, capacities by up to 40%. With two-mass natural frequency, load surges are no longer a problem. The load responsive design increases retention time, working the material longer, which increases screening efficiency. All these features combine to provide the most efficient, long-lasting, and lowest cost of ownership screen in the industry. General Kinematics STM Screen, screen smarter. And you can learn more at generalkinematics.com. Next up, we have CIM. CIM is a leading membership organization for, the, for technical content and creating connections in the mining industry. Mining professionals and students can access a breadth of technical expertise through the CIM Technical Paper Library, the One Mind Digital Repository, the CIM Journal, the CIM Magazine, and attend upcoming CIM webinars. Whether you're working in the field, in the office, or at home, join the community today and learn how they can help you achieve your professional goals. Visit them at cim.org. Next up, we also have Savannah Equipment. Savannah Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world from placer to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. You can visit them at savannahequipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. And we also have Fuller Brothers. Fuller Brothers Inc. has over 59 years of industry expertise at the world. Uh, as the world's leader in providing non-hazardous, non-toxic products that reduce tire manage management costs for a diverse range of customers. They acknowledge formula developers of the globally recognized tire life. Fuller Brothers also produces other quality products such as PSF Plus, PSF, Lubzit, Tire Cream, Dripless Tire Paint, Omega Tire Repair System, as well as select tire services, tools, and tire painting equipment. You can find out more information at fullerbros.com or by calling toll-free at 1-800-547-7785. Fuller Brothers, we have the inside covered. 
There we go. Boom. Boom. <laughs> gotta gotta show, give a shout out to our sponsors because um, the first year was pretty rough during the show. Yes. And now the sponsors have come on and um, nobody makes a show better than the part twos. Um, all right. Thanks for coming back on. It's, it's pretty exciting to have people coming back on our show because uh, <laughs> we actually get to follow the story as companies continue to develop. And, and you've done a lot in the last, last year. So welcome back. Thank you, Chuck. It's a pleasure to be here again. Was it about one year ago or half a year ago when was the first part of this interview? I don't know. To be 100% honest, once you get over about 100 interviews, it's the timeline starts to blur a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, but you, you've certainly been busy, um, with, you know, you're, you're doing, um, you know, you're doing, uh, drone based environmental, uh, environmental and geophysical surveys. Um, so I think first off, you know, we, our audience has grown quite a bit, Ari. So, um, I, I want to, I want to sort of talk about what you've done, but I, for people that have already seen the episode, I thought it'd be interesting to sort of kick off with the milestones you've reached, um, over the last year or so. Yeah, okay, we have mainly been developing geophysical survey systems. And I can say that last years we have been improving our method and systems more further so that we have get a bigger market here in Finland. And nowadays also we are getting more tender in other Nordic countries like Sweden and Norway. So basically we are doing surveys for mineral exploration purposes for mining companies and exploration companies. and. All the time we are trying to improve our systems and also the drones and the softwares, how we process the data itself. But mostly last year we have been hugely developed on the drone side. Mm. Earlier we used uh, custom-made, self-made drones and now we stopped that part and we <clears throat> are buying uh, ready-made planes and little uh. by little tuning them a bit more. And then that is a big achievement for us. In last year, I can say, was it just was kind of building your own? Was it just uh, it just wasn't? What what sort of drove that decision to to sort of obviously? I mean, I've seen some of the videos. I've seen you've got some. They're beautiful planes now that are that you're operating. Um, what sort of drove that decision? Was it just getting too complicated to actual when you're you're yeah, I would say service? Yes, just like some wise people say that narrow your focus. Focus yeah. on your business, and I can say that our business is not build the drones. Right, and I can say that there was too many small mistakes. The drone were not so robust. Right, so I can say that now when we buy a ready-made drones, of course we will tune them them and upgrade them even a bit more, so that the quality is good for us. But now we can focus more on the survey itself, and I can say that the new planes are are somehow much much better. And there are also a few th other things. We earlier used fixed wing plane, just like normal airplanes. Right. But nowadays we use a vertical takeoff so that plane can lift up like oh, this okay. and start flying. So that helps a lot. The landing is much safe, much, much smooth. So you don't break the equipment. They don't shake so much when it's right. landing. So that has improved a lot our efficiency. Was that a difficult shift to make, Ari? The the, the shifting um, to a different plane and the different system was that, or or once you knew that it was time to try to make that shift, were there some pretty good planes out in the market? Was it was it too hard to find them? Yeah. Okay. It was um, psycho psychologically difficult because mm. we built the, our own drones. It's difficult to say that okay, we don't use our own baby anymore. Maybe that right. was the difficult part of. I was just looking at it one year and after yeah, and the second year, I thought that I must make a decision because we are struggling too much about small technical problems. Right. And then I yeah. just bought one plane and push it to the team that let's let's try this. And it quite smoothly it went, but there are technical and psychological challenges before we were able to change the planes. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, that's exciting. I, I like hearing that from companies that are, you know, it's, and we've had to do it so many times internally as well. And it's, it's always, there's these things that you do that you want to hold on to, but then it's like, you're saying that focus, you got to say, well, is that our core business? Is that how we generate revenue? 
and obviously for you, it's the technology. Like, like in the last year as well, you've, I mean, you've landed some um, excellent contracts with some, some major players in the mining industry. Yeah, I have to say that big, at least two big mining companies has been our customers now. So first Quantum Minerals, they have been already our customer, but now big player Rio Tinto has also procured our products. And, and I have to say that their level to get their customer or service provider is quite high. So I'm pleased that we... They were pleased about our product, and that's that's somehow I'm not proud of. Is that uh, is that quite a process to land a, a, a customer of that of a company of that scale um, to to just even their steps, um, you know, safety communications, um, you know, just systems, all that stuff, um, you know, different managers yeah. and different departments. I mean, that must be yeah. quite a system just to get in there. Uh, I can, yeah, I can say that that's a different level than some other companies. So that's exactly how you told that they, there are certain evaluation steps what we you, you know to go through. It's a technical part and also the drone, the legislation part and how the older surveys are done, how it's secured. But, but I think that's a way to do it because it improves also our process. So right. yeah. I would say that it has been helping us also. What about what about new uh, new countries going? And you mentioned like Norway and Sweden. Is it like I I I have a very limited understanding of the of the euro system. And is it uh, like are, are the are the regulations in Finland? Do they mirror places like Norway and Sweden, or how is that set up now? Okay, earlier, let's say a few years ago, it was so that every nation has their own drone regulation, and. It, it, how I say that it was a really difficult to go other countries, but now there is a new regulation from EASA, European Union Aviation Safety Agency. That's a, that's the agency which is creating the regulation and, and monitoring it. So the new regulation is so that if you get permission to fly in some country, you can use this license and request that same permission to other country. And that's what we have done. So we have in Finland, we have Regulars, uh, we have permission to fly Bay and visual line of sight, so we can fly so that we don't need to see our plane. So we can fly like five or ten kilometers far away. And that's how we have requested from Norway the same permission. It doesn't took so long time. It was one month or two months. And it's pretty new for authorities, but they gave the permission for us. Now we are doing the same thing in Sweden. Right. But that will help a lot, just like in driving license. If you get the driving license in one country, you are able right, to drive yeah. in. So right. That's, and, that's it. Now, and it's still the same thing. And I, I imagine that it's like it has to be in a remote area. It has to be over areas that have permits to do exploration in that area. Like you can't just go and fl start flying anywhere. You're, you're, you're getting permits within a specific area to do it, right? Uh, absolutely. I will. Permission where we want to operate is exactly like that. Rural areas, we don't fly over populated areas at all. Even these drones are really nice tools, but I don't trust them too much. So I, I would say that I'm not flying over cities. But like over a few houses, we can fly. We usually, you know, every time we add use the flight line so that we don't fly exactly over the houses. Right, but but our our permission is that we can fly in rural areas and uh, not populated area. There are different kind of permissions that you can get. Yeah, that must be exciting for you that that now that with these new permits coming in, and that also I would assume because I know we've talked about before, you want to get into the U.S. and Canadian markets, um, of course, main, major mining hubs there, and I'm sure Latin America and all the, all sorts of places um, where mining is a main driver. Is that um, do you think there's a possibility that the way that the euro is doing it, that then maybe that could um, that could then it sort of uh, be a template for other markets as well? Do you, do you think there's any chance of that, or is that a bit of a stretch? Yeah, at least how I understood, they have own process going on in the United States and Canada. I, I have a feeling that they are not following maybe the European regulation, but 
they have own process. And I think that they are taking all the time steps towards that, that right. this kind of A and visual line of sight operations are possible. As I don't know the current situation, but I think there are also legislation made that it's possible to do those surveys. Yeah. But at least in Canada, it's every state has its own regulation. It's not so easy. But I would say that after a few years, situation will be much better. So yeah, and and anyway, if you think about next 10 years, it, the uh, le- legislation has to change so that drones are expanding. They will come part of our life. That, that's for sure. Well, I just saw, and I want to just quickly touch on the technology. I, there's a couple of things I wanted to get to, you know, um, with the audience, uh, just to understand. So I maybe move some of the technology to a little bit later. Um, but I, I just saw today someone doing some what similar to what you're doing, and it was a giant helicopter doing it. And I was just thinking that must cost just obscene amounts of money. Like it must just be insane what they have to pay for that unit to go and fly over all those areas. Yeah, yeah. If you talk about this exploration service, they have, yeah, yeah. I know they they are, they must be really expensive. But I must say also that the systems are really good. They are effective also because the right. man helicopter can carry huge equipment which has huge for right. example, transmission power. But I would say that we are not competing all the time in the same market. These manned aircraft or manned helicopter, they have a little bit different different kind of sensors. They have their own market. But I'm trying to push my drone market a little bit competing with them. Right. So I both so have you, own markets. Where do you sort of shine? Where where what is the perfect scenario for you? I would say the perfect scenario for me is if if I talk about line kilometers, how long our planes should fly where we are most effective. We can say few hundred kilometers to let's say ten thousand kilometer. So I would say that it's two large areas to walk, but they are two small areas for manned aircraft. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's that's mainly what kind of surveys we are doing here in Finland. They are like 1,000 line kilometer. It means that it's like 10 kilometer to 10 kilometer. This kind of square we right. measure. It's far too small for manned aircraft. No one wants to come there to fly this kind of Too sport. big to walk back and forth on, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, I think there, there is our market. I see. Okay. Let's talk a little bit. I want to get in this because last show it was, we kind of did it at the end and I kind of always wanted to kind of go back is what is sort of one of the things that you want to do? Like, do you want to, are, are you looking for partners? Are you actively looking for them? Are you at that stage in the business where if someone's listening to this, they can say, um, Hey, can we start talks? What, what, what would sort of that perfect partnership be with you? Yeah. I'm t- nowadays I'm, I'm an- I can focus on that part more because because our drones are working much better. They are safe. They are easy to use. And I think they are so easy to use that now we can teach that to the other local drone teams. So I'm, how I'm, I would like to do the business is that I'm looking for drone operators in other countries who would be interested to make this kind of business. Mm. So they doesn't need to know so much or anything about the exploration or mining industry. But the people who can fly drones, they are interested about drones. They want to develop it and play with the drones. That's that's just like people what we have in our team. Oh, okay. so the drone team, yeah. So, sorry, so you're not looking for an exploration company to partner with. You're looking for uh, basically drone pilots. I'm uh, the basically yes. Drone pilots would be enough. Of course, in the sales part, I would need help. But if I find good drone pilots or people who are interested about drones, that's good start. Yeah. And what about the data collection? Now, how would that all be set up? If you were, let, let's say, I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm not, but let's say I was a pilot, uh, a drone pilot. I have some understanding of the mining business. I have some connections in it, so I can probably get into the market. And there will be people watching that have those abilities. Um, who? What about data, data collection and all that sort of stuff? How how was that all set up? Would that be a central hub? 
to back that's going back to you or or what what would they what would that part of it be yeah currently how we do our team is in the field they are they don't know so much about the geophysics or geology they know how to make the survey they know how to collect the data and they send the data to our server and then our geophysicist will process the data so that will be the model business model itself that local drone pilots could make the survey collect the data and transfer it to the server and then it will be processed and given to customer okay so so in that system i mean how and i just i want to stay on it because again we put it kind of at the end of the last interview so i want to talk about it what what would be the most challenging part of setting this up? Again, I come in, let's say that I know how to fly drones. I, you know, I've got some connections in the mining industry. What would be the most challenging part of getting this underway in, let's say, Canada or or someone in Norway or or what have you that's listening? Yeah, that's that's really good question. The most difficult part is to teach how to use our system. Sorry, because there are there are several technicals technical things what has to be mastered before you can do this. So it, it's not only drone flying, you need to handle the survey equipments itself. So training and teaching would, will be the most difficult part. And one interesting thing is happening next week, next week, Wednesday, one person from Nigeria is coming. He's a young talent, about 19 years old. I found him from the, or my colleague found him from the Facebook. We have been chatting, talking about one year, and now we will test it. So next week he will arrive here and we start training with him, of how he can learn to use our system. And best way to learn is to be in the field with us. Right. And it, this, I can say that this, it's not, this is not too difficult at all. But it would be difficult to train online if I would teach right. you from here. It, it's that's almost impossible. Yeah. That's also a tough part. If there are local drone team in Canada, it means that I need or our team should travel there and start teaching. That's maybe the challenging part. Right. Yeah. Especially especially in these days when travel is a little bit of a <laughs> a yeah. tricky thing. Yeah. Absolutely. What um, have you? You know, when you're when you were developing this, you know, this company for you, and I, I just again, I just want to go back because I think it's important to sort of have that, that 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 understanding of what what it takes. You know, when you started the communication with companies and started talking to them, getting them to test that, was that quite the challenge, or because you were really fit into this, you know, you had a certain gap that you were filling in the market, were companies pretty receptive to what you were trying to sell them? Yeah, I, I remember we started as 2013, but in the first years we didn't do almost nothing. But 2015, 16 was exactly that phase what you mentioned. We started to we have a first prototype and then we started to sell to customer. And no one bought our products because we were totally new. Drones were new. No one believed what what is this technology and how this is going to work. But it helped that we had a friends. Who were all already in mining community, mm. and they, uh, one of my friends, succeeded to get a good pilot survey for us. And mining community, I can see that it's quite a small family. Right. If you get your one leg inside, then and if you can provide good services, good quality data, then the word spreads out, and that right. happened to us. So that's how it expanded. So after the first pilot survey, then other companies started to ask pilot surveys. It was quite interesting that everyone was asking pilot, even we were able to show that, hey, okay, this data is good, but anyway, we need to do, even sometimes today, we need to do pilot survey to someone, even we have been surveying almost right. 60,000 kilometers. They, they, want it, they want it done for them. The... What about the actual uh, technology that you're using? This radiometric technology. Again, I'm not an expert at it, Ari. So my, my apologies um, for sort of. I have to keep the questions simple, but you can kind of get into details. Over the last year, has the technology itself, the way that you do the survey, the systems, the way you collect the data, the way you present data, is that very similar, or is that evolved as well? 
Yeah, I would say that we have been, the technology itself is the, or survey method is same. We have been measuring magnetic fields, for example, here in back, and there is magnetic map of the Finland, if you can see here, the whole Finland and okay. the, the magnetic surveys, they have been done decades or 100 years, nothing new, but I would say that the new innovative part is that how we can make the sensor, develop the sensor systems that they are small enough so that the drones can carry them. Mm. Radiometric, it's measuring gamma radiation. It's pretty normal for everyone. We know that gamma radiation is coming from the ground, but how you can develop a system which is light enough because usually gamma radiation su survey systems, they are really heavy, let's say eight kilograms, 10 kilograms, and we would like to get them only a few kilograms, two kilograms maybe. And I know that, of course, that when you develop a sensor system which are light, maybe they are not as sensitive, but if they are sensitive enough for the customer, that's enough. Right. So there is the most important part. You know, it's an interesting thing that you, you're touching on. Again, I'm, I'm kind of relating it back to sort of where we specialize, and that's in in, in video production and, and remote interviews and that sort of thing. And the, it's very interesting that you can't buy your way into the right technology. You can't go into on, uh, online and say, I'm going to spend a million dollars. You could literally spend a million dollars and buy all the wrong equipment. <laughs> it's not yeah. about that. It's about finding the right the right adapters, the right cable, the right uh, technology that is compatible with this technology, and it's about putting it together. That is, that's where the trick is. It's not about you can't just buy your way in, and that's that's something I had to learn. I mean, we bought stuff and then we got it and had to send it back. And I'm sure you've been through those types of yeah. situations. So I just yeah. found it interesting when you said that sensor. It's it's not about it's not about being the most powerful sensor. It's about being the one that's needed for that job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And just like maybe you have done, you buy some component, some instrument, and then you realize it's not working. So right. there's this kind of quality control all the time. All the time you need to fix problems and go step by step forward. And that, that's exactly the whole system. Well, we are building them basically from individual components, our systems. Mm. If we talk about electromagnetic, we are developing three systems. Magnetic, which is ready now, and then radiometric. Radiometric, which is measuring gamma radiation, and then electromagnetic, which is measuring conductivity. How conductive ground is, is a primary geophysical element. So magnetic field, radiometric, gamma radiation, and then electromagnetic. And this has been used several decades or even more, but developing those as a lightweight, just like I told, selecting correct components and repeating, building another prototype and another prototype. And of course, we have got plenty of funding that has helped us a lot. So it's because this requires money also. Yeah, there's been quite a, ro in, in Europe, there's been quite a robust um, investment in this type of thing as well, hasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I said that I, I have been successful because there are universities universities around me and research institutions. I have connections to them, and there are really talented people who can develop all kinds of sensor systems and how to develop new tools for mineral exploration. And we have been able to participate in that kind of big projects where we have got funding. Of course, there's huge competition about that funding. If there is funding available, everyone is trying to get it. So it's not right. so easy to get it. But yeah. we have been getting enough money so that we have been able to develop the systems all the time. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about just, just before we sort of wrap up the interview as well is, um, is outside of the mining industry. Um, and actually, I wanted a quick, quick, quick question about Finland before we go that. I noticed in a lot of the pictures, sort of that landscape, there was like this sort of open air with like little trees and sort of, what's the landscape? I mean, is it quite diverse, the landscape in Finland? Or, or what's what's sort of the picture like there? Hmm. It's um, plenty of lakes, forest, and there are not mountains. There are hills and valleys. So uh, I would okay. say that if you talk about, think about drone surveys, this is quite perfect or okay because drones it's challenging for drones if there is 
hazardous or difficult terrain type, let's say mountains, for example. Right. Mountains also means there are plenty of wind. So Finland is quite flat and that helps a lot for these drone surveys. Mm. So that's our landscape. Um, what about outside the industry, Ari? These um, like like other have have you sort of been invited to be a part of other industries or tested out? Are you interested in that, or, or are you pretty focused on the mining sector? Uh, I would say that we are one hundred percent focused on mining sector, but I know that these tools can what we are developing can be used also in other business areas, and that's why, in my mind, I. In future, I'm also looking for other possibilities. Mm. Let's say if we talk about gamma radiation, that can be used also in other applications. It can be also, okay, if there comes nuclear plants, if you need to measure gamma radiation there, or maybe some military solutions can be. And this conductivity measurement, constructions yard, all kind of exploration in the soil top surface right. it doesn't need to be a mineral exploration but many other businesses are interested to know what is the content of the soil the so ground. that could be agriculture could that would that be yeah. applicable yeah. agriculture for that, that, things like that that that's that's also one possible yeah, yeah. i have not yet found correct solutions where are the customers what is our product but i know that what we are developing, it can be applied. So that's why I keep my eyes open. Mm -hmm. I'm not only, okay, like I told, I'm focusing on mining sector. Yes, because we will get our revenue there, but I keep my eyes also open to other business areas. Yeah. All right, I you know thanks for thanks for coming back on the show again. It's uh, it it was interesting having you on last time, but it's just there's something about part two. We've had a lot this summer, a lot of people coming back um, on the show, which is hopefully a sign that there's good value. But it's also it's just it's very interesting because a lot of times the part one sort of sets up the company. But now getting to actually sort of see the directions where you're developing, where you're growing, some of those shifts you made, it's quite interesting. So I really do appreciate you coming back on the show. And I hope it's not the last time. I hope as you continue to grow, yeah. you keep coming back. Let's see. If we can develop something really innovative even more, then it would be nice to at least show the pictures and videos maybe what we have done. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna play a few videos, but yeah, hopefully more come in, and, and never know. Maybe one of these days we can actually do a show from Finland. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Please welcome here. All right, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we'll we'll talk again soon. Thanks. It was a pleasure to discuss again. Okay, um, and Gaudi, we will put links and everything to, if you want to get in touch with Ari, if you're interested in in partnering up with their company of or of course their services um yeah. but yeah lots of fun having them on we survived the heat i think it cooled down a little bit it did it did it was it was intense there for a minute <laughs> do i know, don't I, know what I, happened i, I actually really do don't. know i realized what happened so i went into the other room and i i left the front door the front the room to the other door and that's where all the heat was from hitting those windows all day so uh, it poured in that it was my fault of course <laughs> <laughs> um but it's nice now uh, we're not it's nice now <laughs> uh, it was great to have ari on i i you know i, I think i've said it about 10 times already tonight yeah. i love having part twos they're just yeah. it just, there's something special about them they always get a lot of views people really like following that storyline of companies it's very interesting um where can people follow like share comment subscribe and or bash us <laughs> <laughs> okay, so definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we've got uh, two episodes a week on there, sometimes three. We also have um, uh, the uh, episodes from um, the podcast we produce for Change Itself. Mm. Um, and they have, I believe, episode four, which will be coming out soon. Um, so definitely want to check that out. Um, and if contact us, info at crownsman.com, if you would like to be part of one of our shows, um, or you know someone that should be on our show. That is also um, a good uh, thing to contact us about. <laughs> yeah, we uh, yeah we need more guests. We've got um, all our we've got some sort of in, independent people that are booking guests for us. Yeah, and they are bringing guests. I mean, we just not even on our radar. That episode we did um, on the Crownsman show 
the the robotic window washing they developed it out of Sky israel robotics. Yeah. yeah it was it was, it was wild good. companies like good. ari like and i i like with like ari that shift of using coming in with different now they're using different planes and that yeah. they're they can go up you know and we're gonna have videos of that it's just awesome so yeah. thank you everybody for watching um thank you for bearing with the story if i was sweating at the beginning <laughs> i wasn't nervous <laughs> thank you for watching yeah. we will see you on the next episode of mining now